Welcome to episode 8 of Inside the Video Store. Yet another one, another week goes by. Um, thank you again for tuning in. Uh, I hope you're all well. I trust you're all well. You all look very well. I'll tell you that. Um, what have we got this week? We've got quite a lot, actually. We've got a, a fair bit in the fresh produce section. We've got another big delivery uh, of, of older stock that's uh, got some really exciting stuff in there. There's, again, some cool films out on loan that uh, I didn't expect to go out. And um, there's also three more uh, Sleeping Giants, which aren't streaming, which, uh, yeah, again, proves the value of the video store. So let's get stuck on with the newbies. Um, a couple of DVDs to start off. We have Mean Girls, which isn't a remake of the 2004 film. It is actually an adaptation of the stage musical written by Tina Fey. Um, it was actually slated for a Paramount Plus premiere, but they switched it to theatrical at the last minute, and um, I think they're grateful they did because um, it took $100 million. Um, by all accounts, it's jolly good fun. Um, so yeah, that is the main title for this week, Mean Girls. The rest are a bit of a interesting uh, assortment. We have Prey, exclamation mark. Uh, we do love a nature and a mock film, don't we? Who doesn't love a nature and a mock film? Um, had a tiny theatrical run playing in only five uh, screens. But, you know, look at that cast. Who you got? You got Ryan Philippe, uh, Emile Hirsch. And you got Mena Savari. I mean, you know, 20 years ago, that's a really good cast. 2024, maybe not so exciting. But still, you know, looks all right to me. Looks all right to me. Uh, next, this looks uh, rather bleak. Uh, the end we start from. It's a British survival film. Maybe uh, destined for that thinly populated section with Children of Men with Clive Owen, perhaps. Look at that style of film. Um, but yeah, an environmental crisis has hit London, and uh, Jodie Comer, uh, who was born just down the road from here, is uh, is fighting to get her, her newborn to safety, I think. Um, but yeah, Benedict Cumberbatch uh, is in it. I think he produced it as well. I think he picked up the rights of the book uh, a few years ago, so I think he's the man behind that film. Uh, next up, The Bellkeeper, which is described as an action horror. Take from that what you will. Um, Jeffrey Reddick, the man behind Final Destination, produces this. And Randy Couture, uh, the uh, ex-wrestler, maybe he's a current wrestler. I don't know. I'm not a wrestler, as you can tell. Um, yeah, he's the uh, he's the guy who's, who's acting in this. Has Randy Couture ever been in a good film? I don't know. Maybe this might be the first. But judging by the synopsis about a group of friends travel to a secluded campsite to film a documentary. It doesn't look the most intriguing or original film, but never mind. It is here and it is available, and I'm sure people will rent it and tell me in due course. Uh, next up, we have a pair of queer cinema films, which both look fascinating. They're both world cinema. Um, pretty much this is the only avenue in which I'm getting world cinema these days. There's this, I know we got a couple in a few weeks back, but, but uh, yeah... Um, first up is Norwegian Dream, uh, part Norwegian myself, so quite intrigued about this one. Um, it's the familiar take of a closeted boy meets an out and loud drag performer, albeit with the addition of a gorgeous Scandinavian backdrop. Uh, so yeah, that's out this week from our old friends at Peccadillo. Um, yeah, looks interesting this one, this does look interesting. As does this. From Norway to Argentina, we have Since the Last Time We Met. Similar theme, albeit in the wake of a 15-year anniversary of a clandestine affair. Reviews state it's pretty good. Uh, played at a few festivals and got some good notices. So again, it looks like the two uh, best films this week are going to be those two. Um... On to a couple of boutique releases. There were two Warner Archive releases this week, but they are yet to uh, arrive. I actually did a cheeky pre-sale over at Amazon um, because they were both pre-selling for £9 each on Blu-ray, which was a bit crazy. But typically they haven't shipped yet. 
But uh, when they do come in, hopefully next week, we'll, we'll feature them on the show. In the meantime, we do have a pair of boutique releases, starting with this from Raro Video. I'm so glad that Raro Video is uh, has got a UK incarnation now. Uh, thanks very much to Radiance for organising that brilliant label who are have been releasing some of the creme de la creme of Italian genre cinema for, for years and years now. And it's great to have films like this over in the UK. Uh, I, I imported this from Rero a few years ago, probably 15 years ago on the DVD, which is a good DVD, but to have it on blue is pretty good. This is El Boss. Um, Fernando De Leo directed it. Henry Silva stars in it. Um, made the year after my very favourite Italian crime film, which is Milano Calibro 9. Brilliant film, made by Fernando De Leo, and this is the one he made the year after. Il Boss, very good film, very good film, and an essential rental for those of you into Poliziotteschi films. Finally, 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 I was only saying to a customer recently that maybe 12 months ago, more likely 18, we didn't have a Cynthia Rothrock in here. We didn't have a Cynthia Rothrock film in here at all, apart from a couple of budget DVDs that nobody battered an eyelid at. But now she's on Blu-ray. Everyone loves Cynthia Rothrock. Not that DVD collect, not that Blu-ray collectors are fickle in any way at all. No, not at all, not at all. But yes, here is the new Cynthia Rothrock uh, release. This one's coming from Eureka, and it is a double bill of China O'Brien One and Two, two films directed by Robert Klaus, um, the director of Enter the Dragon. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I may sound begrudging and a little bit cynical about the sudden interest in Cynthia Rothrock films, but I am glad because the world needs more Cynthia love and um, it's great to see her, her films released on Blu-ray. Um, it's absolutely brilliant and um, they're such good fun, they're such good fun. Uh, these two might not be her best, but still uh, they are very worthwhile additions to the uh, rental collection at Snips and that is this week's Fresh Produce. Okie dokie, it's time to move on to what's in the box again. Invisible box, because that's the way we like it. Um, I'm sorry about this. I mean, look at it. It's just, it's filth. It's filth, quite frankly, filth. Um, it's too much to go through. I'm probably going to be talking about this for about the next 15 minutes, and I apologise for waffling insanely um what have we got here we got three yeah three lots of 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 deliveries um i have a um i don't know if anyone else does this i have a stackery account s-t-a-c-r-y stackery because in the uk uh, obviously it's difficult to import from america just simply because of the prohibitive uh, postage costs so essentially have a p.o box based in new hampshire which collates all of my American orders and then post them all in one box so instead of me having to pay four or five shipping fees per month uh, I get them all put together and then I just have to pay 20 quid to ship the whole lot so hence why is this is my monthly stack of, of US purchases from Amazon and a few other indie places and that kind of thing so hence uh, hence the volume hence the volume first up we, we've got some more Warner Archive I'm sorry I know I keep go on about Warner Archive but I'm just clearing a wish list that I've had for probably a decade and it just feels so good to do that now I've got the room in the new Warner Archive section now people are really renting it I thought right let's go for it let's clear the wish list so it's going to take me a few few months to do that um but yeah I made progress this month and let's have a look what we got I'm a big fan of Irwin Allen don't you just love Irwin Allen disaster movies they're just great they're the Sunday afternoon viewing aren't they Sunday afternoon, Saturday afternoon, just rainy weather outside. Stick on an Irwin Allen movie and, you know, you're, you're just in cheese heaven. So I got The Night the Bridge Fell Down, which is just great. It's very, very long. It is, uh, yeah, just over three hours long. But look at that cast. I mean, who you got? Yeah, you got Desi Arnaz, uh, Leslie Nielsen, uh, Barbara Rush. Brilliant. Such a great cast of people. One drawback to Warner Archive, especially when ordering it from afar, is that the clasps 
in uh, double cases aren't that great so it means any kind of knock your disc falls out disc falls out and um, with them being on DVD-Rs which are notoriously easily scratchable a couple of mine got hammered uh, I can't even two minds whether to send them back or I did test them out on my player and they seem fine so I'm just um, I'm gonna mull that one over but yeah really excited to be getting this two disc set with the night the bridge fell down because I think that completes my Owen Allen collection uh, which is pretty cool glad about that um, so yeah that's in um, I've got a few more classic comedies I'm going to use the word classic very very loosely um, especially when it comes to The Stupids which was the one John Landis film I didn't have in um, this is hard work it is hard work there is a song in this called I'm My Own Grandpa which is hysterical the vast majority of the rest is absolute just awful just the worst of the worst so yeah I would like to like it but I don't but I like that song so yeah I might give another watch just maybe under the uh, influence of a whole host of substances and the uh, in the idea it might find it funny but probably not Richard Linklater suburbia can you believe suburbia hasn't had a British release since the days of VHS that is outrageous um, as I said to you last week or the week before my customers have been having a real uh, resurgence on Richard Linklater films recently. Days to Confuse have been flying out, Slack has been flying out, and a few other bits and bobs. So yeah, it was essential for me to get Suburbia. I haven't seen it for a long, long time, but uh, really pleased to have that in. Um, overnight Delivery. I remember this on VHS. I remember it being really funny. I know Greasy Reesey is in it, as Kevin Smith calls her. Um, and yeah... But you can't go wrong with uh, Paul Rudd, can you? Remember it being great? Probably wrong. So yeah, overnight delivery came in. Uh, one Blu-ray, uh, and that is Reflections in a Golden Eye. I've been asked for this a couple of times, John Huston's film. And the advantage with this is you get two editions. You get uh, you get it in both its forms. The original gold-hued version of the film, as Huston intended, and the full-color general theatrical release. So that's quite exciting. Um, you may have noticed over the last six or seven, well, seven or eight weeks, that I'm a Dan Aykroyd fetishist, and I do have to own every Dan Aykroyd film available. You know, we all have our vices. So, uh, yeah, finally got a copy of My Fellow Americans uh, with Jack Lemmon and James Garner as well. Uh, Peter, Peter Segal directed it, of course. Um, so, yeah, looking forward to watching this again. I think, I think it was all right, actually, from what I remember. But, uh, yeah, another cool 90s comedy to have in uh now the rest of these warner archives i have no idea about uh oh sorry i do about this one which is um don seagal film don seagal don seagal is very hot at the moment quentin tarantino loves him a few of my customers have gone through his filmography so yeah this is one don seagal film i didn't have in and um yeah charles branson so i mean you cannot go wrong with that can you uh, but yeah, the rest of the Warner Archives I know nothing about, uh, but I am addicted to these uh, multi-film collections. So we have a Lee Tracy uh, four-film uh, collection. There we have a Guy Kibbe triple feature, all kind of comedy-themed stuff. Uh, this isn't. This is the Falcon. Uh, yeah, we have the Gay Falcon. Uh, a date with a falcon falcon takes over falcon's brother etc etc seven movie collection of falcon movies we like an amateur sleuth here at snips uh then we have the robert benchley miniatures collection uh which is just a a whole host of shorts um which were made between 35 and 44 and we also have the joe mcdokes comedies which i'm sure you'll be fully aware of um yeah again a collection of shorts i mean look at them look at them. hundreds well maybe not uh so yeah we have 10 hours of joe mcdoke's comedies because you know that's what the people want <laughs> do they ever um and finally in the warner archive stash we have the rko brown and carney comedy collection um yeah so uh Intrigued about this. Intrigued about this. 
but it should be fun. It should be fun. I'm sure some of you can tell me a little bit more on which one of these collections I should uh, I should take home first because they all look great, and I, I do love classic comedy from the 30s and 40s. They don't make it like they used to. Um, you may remember it wasn't last week. Was it week before? I had some German discs in. Um, they were great, brilliant. A few action films. Got some more. You know, we all have a bit of George Pappard. So I got a copy of PJ on Blu-ray. Of course, it's out in America, I think. Kino Lorba. It's not good to me. It's region A locked. So the Euro disc, the German disc, is good enough. So yeah, pleased to have that uh, slice of George Pappard. Uh, Tibor Takach, I'm a big fan of. I love his creature features. His best film, bar none, is hardcover. Uh, A.K.A. I'm Madman. I think you got it in the States as I'm Madman, didn't you, in the, in the Shout Factory collection. Um, but yeah, brilliant film. 89, I think it was. Good, good, good horror film. My horror section needs that film, as it also needs The Unborn. Directed by Rob, Rodman Flender and produced by Roger Corman. Um, yeah, glad to have that in. Glad to have that in. And another horror by our old friend Graydon Clark. I was just transcribing a Graydon Clark interview the other day for our Gary Graver biography. Um, this is arguably his best horror film. Um, Clue Gulliger, yeah, superb, and George Kennedy can't go wrong. So, yeah, some Germans, a quadruple of German films I got in. And finally, 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 and last but not least, I don't think we have um, Fred Olin Ray's Bikini Airways. As you might know, uh, Fred Olin Ray is releasing a lot of his back catalogue via the Makeflix, makeflix.com website, which is run by J.R. Buckwalter, the classic um, low-budget horror movie director and producer. And yeah, Fred is, is releasing a lot of his films via that website. He's mastering them himself, putting onto Blu-rays. Some of the Blu-rays are um, on demand. Some of the Blu-rays are pressed. This is a pressed Blu-ray. I know he released the last one, I think what it was, but it was on a... a, a a rewritable Blu-ray and people weren't too happy about it, but who cares? Um, so yeah, this uh, this is the 2003 film, I think it is. Um, and yeah, late night cable TV classic with uh, photography by Gary Graver, no less. And a bonus second feature, which is Nicole Sheridan's Hot Housewives, I'm sure. You know, you'll all be racing through the streets of Merseyside to come and rent this. Brilliant. What a collection of films. Be glad to get them integrated into our library this weekend. And hopefully some of them can go out. But yeah, don't know much about those Warner archives. So if you can advise me, please let me know in the comment section below. So what's been renting this week? What's been renting this week? It's been a busy week. It's been another busy week. I'm waiting for the bubble to pop uh, at the moment. But uh, we do have some warmer weather uh, around the corner. So, you know, that tends to be the time of the year where things tend to quieten down a bit. So I'm guessing that uh, May might be a little bit quieter than uh, March and April, which were just absolutely bonkers. Um, but we shall see, because if you're a film fan like me, um, as you can tell by my bronzed complexion, I don't really like to see sunlight all that much. So, irrespective of the weather, um, I don't really care, and I'll be sitting indoors watching movies with the curtains closed, because that's uh, that's what it's about. Um, yeah, some interesting choices this week uh, that people have rented. Um, again, one of those weeks where you get questions that you don't really expect, like... Um, can you recommend me a really good Matthew Lillard film? Obviously, uh, Dead Man's Curve, uh, which I saw at the cinema back in the day. Great film it is. Great film. Dan Rosen directed it. Um, I love this. Just really dark, twisty, caper. Um, yeah, very funny, very funny. Big fun of this. Tartan Video put it out. Um, definitely one to recommend if you haven't seen it. I love it. I think it's great. Um, Ed Wood, take it out and trade. Oh, I mean, it's so good to see films like this going out. I'm a big fan of Ed Wood. This obviously was uh, much, much later in his career. Uh, almost a decade and a half 
that was a decade and a half after Plan 9 from Outer Space. Uh, and yeah, uh, obviously Ed didn't, um, life didn't treat Ed too well. Um, but this was an interesting period in his life. He was writing a lot of films, he was writing a lot of books as well. Um, and yeah, this is an interesting slice uh, of his career, which uh, I do recommend. It's a great disc from Agfa. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Plus you get the bonus movie on this, The Love Feast, which is starring Ed Wood. Cap People went out this week. Big fan of Paul Schrader. Um, so much so I just set up a Paul Schrader section about six months ago because I just felt, you know, I had every Paul Schrader film, um, bar one, I think, I forget which one. It's hard to come by in the UK. Um, but I thought, ah, oh, just crazy. It's such a inconsistent, but, you know, moments of absolute genius in his filmography. Um, uh, Blue Collar, you know, Affliction, um, First Reformed. Some of them are just unbelievable. And then you have other stuff that isn't that great, which we won't go into. Cap People is good though. Cap People is good indeed. Pleased to see that renting. I think I've missed a trick on this. Um, I th didn't Arrow put out the Blu-ray of Versus, uh, Rihei Kitamura's film? I think they might have done. Anyway, I've missed it. I must uh, try and check that out because uh, I do love Versus. I think Versus is a terrific film. Um, and the DVD needs an upgrade because this is one of the original Tartan DVDs. So I must take a look at that and try and um, upgrade somehow. Um, Itu Mamatambi and Afonso Curon. What a film. What a film. Ah, it is, isn't it? Just a superb, superb slice of perfection. Absolute cinematic perfection. Great to see this going out. It's been a few years since it uh, stretched its legs into someone else's DVD player. So... Uh, Really pleased to see that renting. That's so good. So good. Uh, one of my new customers came in for the first time. For the first time. And what did they rent? The Last of Sheila. I mean, who does that? Who does that? Who, who goes into a movie rental store for the first time and rents The Last of Sheila? What a brilliant choice of film. What a brilliant choice. What an unheralded, little-known murder mystery that's just fantastic. That's so good. Great cast as well. Diane Cannon, Raquel Welsh, James Coburn, James Mention, Ian McShane. Brilliant. Herbert Ross directed it. So good, so good. Really pleased to see something like that going out. I and mean, when it's a first rental, it is just superb. Also, my favourite Steven Spielberg film rented out. 1941. Can you believe it? Yeah, this one doesn't go out so often. Don't know why. I think it's hilarious. Um, but good to see it going out because it, ah, it's so good. Of course, this Blu-ray includes both the theatrical and the extended versions. Uh, finally, out this week, and I know some of you will wince, some of you will wince, uh, is Godzilla. Godzilla, somewhere out to Godzilla again. Uh, I, I know, I know you, you, a lot of you will think I'm psychopathic by renting uh, this, uh, this Blu-ray collection out. Some of you think, well, it, it should just go in a glass cabinet and never be never be touched by a human hand but you know these things are meant to be watched rip that cellophane off rip that cellophane off get it out of the case burn the slip cover okay maybe not um but yeah th these things deserve to be watched they don't deserve to be you know wrapped in cotton wool and um you know uh, preserved forever just watch them watch them absorb them take it all in uh, and yeah, when I, when I bought this, I, I got it good for a good price. I didn't think I would break even on it. But to be honest, it's renting like mad. And I'll probably break even in the next uh, few months. But yeah, more Godzilla have rented out this week. Great to see. And uh, well, so should they. So they should. Because uh, what a collection of films. What a collection of films from Criterion. An essential box set. But obviously not an easy one to store on the shelf. But you know these things are sent to try us. Quiz time. Decided to have a little fun with the quiz this week. Uh, usually I'm showing you a still of the Snips BSI section, which is prone to all kinds of great guesses. But no doubt some of you are getting a little frustrated 
with my definitions behind what can go there and why it's there and why it's somewhere else and yeah other stuff that belongs in a different location um so yeah i mean it, it's good people enjoy it people like it feedback is good but i might just give it a rest for this week and maybe just give you something a little bit more easy and maybe something a little bit more cheeky um so yeah this week i've decided as a one-off to show a still that has clearly defined parameters and here it is yes it's the iconic series of 1313 movies from cult director david dakoto 14 all-time classics but one is missing which one? I've even sorted them all into alphabetical order. So, you know, it's super, super easy. Not that I need to do that, as I'm sure you can take a trip to your movie room and um, check it, check your own collection there. Because, you know, I'm sure you all have these at home. I hope you all have these at home. Anyhow, the winner will get a Dakota Owen surprise. And to coincide with the announcement of Arrow's six movie Nico Masterarchist box set, I have a sealed copy of In the Cold of the Night to give away, which features our um, audio commentary, which, which I'm not sure anyone really listened to. Um, also, I have a copy of uh, Warner Archives' The Blue Knight with um, William Holden to give away as well, sealed copy of that. So you get In the Cold of the Night, new sealed, you get Blue Knight on DVD, uh, which is a fascinating little thing. Big thing, long. And um, you get a nice uh, David Dakota style surprise. I don't, I don't mean like a, a strapping young man in tighty whities turning up at your door, but you will get a Dakota surprise of some kind. Um, and yeah, that's it. Best of luck and comment below. Yeah, mercifully for you, it's a shorter show this week because, you know, life happens. Um, so I'm just going to round up things with a uh, a quick um, round of Sleeping Giant. As usual, every week we have three films that aren't streaming in the UK that maybe haven't been rented in a little while, um, but should be rented. They should be part of the conversation because they're all terrific films. Uh, first up, I tweeted about this. I had a, I had a customer... And uh, you can follow me at the, at the Dave Wayne. Um, I had a customer in uh, a few days back. And we were kind of discussing... They, the, the customer that rented Love Exposure, you might remember that. And they didn't get through it. It just, you know, they're, they're in the health service. And four hours on a uh, Far Eastern film is a little bit of a tall order, especially when you're under that much pressure so you know no blame but they said it's just one of those tricky things they tried to introduce it to their partner but their partner wasn't that um into it you know that's that's fine and we kind of segued off into a conversation about films that are difficult to recommend and it turns out we both have a rabid enthusiasm for short bus yeah i mean i love this film uh john cameron mitchell uh big fan you know we all love hedwig and the angry inch which has a great Criterion edition here. Uh, but sure, plus, I mean, what a film. Thank you to the person who pointed out that it's available on region free Blu ray uh, over in the States. I shall be importing that ASAP. But yeah, Short Bus is uh, an unrecommendable recommendation. It's a brilliant film about relationships, very raw, very honest, very powerful, maybe too realistic for some people. Um, but I love this film. I've seen it several times. And uh, so, according to Twitter, so have a few other people. So I'm really, really pleased that this has a loyal following. And uh, hopefully I can start getting it rented out to suburbia over here. Wouldn't that be nice? So, yeah, that's this week's. Oh, not streaming, obviously, as well. So hopefully you get that going out. Um, but on the hunt for this for a while, Weekend of Bernie's 2. The first film uh, is a regular renter. It's out every single month, uh, at least once a month. Uh, and the sequel is, is always asked for, but of course it's never been seen in this country since the days of VHS. And it's not streaming, so if you want to see it, you need to see it via this Aussie import which arrived into store this week. Uh, so yeah, Weekend of Bernie's 2. How cool is that to have that in store? Hopefully start getting that renting this weekend. Uh, 
is great. Amazing what isn't streaming though, isn't it? I mean, I, I know I'll come back to it. I know I sound like a, a broken record that people say, oh yeah, but I subscribe to blah, blah, blah. I can get everything. You know, what's the point in going to a video store? I can get everything at home. But you really can't. You really, really can't. If only you knew how much you're missing out on. It's uh, it's shocking. So yeah, Weekend of Bernie's 2 is in stock. I don't know if you remember the Joe Nesbo craze about 15 years ago. Joe Nesbo, Headhunters. That was the main film. That was a great film, wasn't it? Headhunters, Norwegian. Um, did anyone see that? Jackpot. That was good. Oh, this this is a film. This is a film. Darkly comical caper. Oh, twisty. Really, really good. Great film. Um, not streaming. Not streaming in the UK. Hasn't rented in probably four or five years. And hopefully this will change that because it deserves a look. It's a great film. Um, yeah. Norwegian theme today, apparently. Norwegian theme. So yeah, if you're on the lookout for a great twisted foreign language film that has you on the edge of your seat, it's one of those that doesn't let up from the get-go, then I thoroughly recommend Jackpot. And they are this week's Sleeping Giants. Okay, that's about it this week. Um, kind of shocked that I kept that to a relatively consumable level uh, which is nice um, thank you again for watching please comment below uh, on anything uh, anything you don't like anything you do like anything you want to see um, whether you want a new host I would um, then then just comment below and uh, we'll have a chat and I'll read out some comments next week on episode 9 uh, in the meantime don't hesitate to follow the show uh, follow the store rather on Instagram where you can find me um, if you type Sip Snips Movies into the search bar. Same with Facebook. And as I repeatedly say, I am on the app, formerly known as Twitter, at uh, the Dave Wayne. Great. Thank you again. Thank you for sharing um, these episodes so much. It's one thing, you know, it is crazy. I put a tweet out every Friday just to say that the new episode is up. And for some reason, people just share it. It is crazy such a selfless thing to do and it really is greatly appreciated um like i say it's all about keeping physical media alive it's all about getting people into the remaining video stores that are left in the world and getting them to rent um rent films because it's so important it's so important we can't have a generation of kids growing up and all they have access to is the crap that's on netflix with barely anything made before 1990 we can't have that we need to fight for physical media, keep it alive, and keep it in the public consciousness. Very important, very important. Not about money, not about money, not about income, not about that. It's irrelevant. Just It's about people seeing films. It's about people seeing films. That That's it. Film history, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, that's what it's about. It's about getting kids into classic films, and not so classic films. It's about taking a chance. Rent something. Here's, here's, here's a challenge for you. Watch a film this week and don't check the IMDb score before you put it on. It's difficult, but don't do it. Don't check the... Just just look at the cover up. Just look at the cover up. Pretend it's 1993. Pretend you're in a video store. Look at the cover art of something, anything, and watch it just based on the cover art. That's really good to do that. There's no expectations. You're not there judging it thinking... Well, this says 7.3 on IMDb. I'm not I'm not getting 7.3, I'm getting 7.2. Just don't think about that. Just look at a nice cover, think, that looks good. I'm going to rent that. And do it that way. Pretend, pretend to be in a video store. Honestly, it's good for the soul. I'll see you next week.